success, but it guarantees that God will be pleased with us and God will bless us. Okay, so I hope that you all understand this and have um, understand and uh, don't follow prosperity gospel. Now some people think that using prosperity gospel will motivate people to give more money. They will say, give more money and you'll be blessed by God. This is not, now, to bless by God is true. The Bible does say to, you'll be blessed by God. But we cannot say, okay, you receive so many times back. When you give 1,000 US dollars, then you get 5,000 US, US dollars back or more. We cannot guarantee that to people. We will say, God will bless your life. You experience blessings of God. But we cannot promise anything that the Bible doesn't uh, doesn't teach okay now our next theme is motivate people to change by God's grace um, I will show a number of Bible verses and then how to motivate people with God's grace and first we motivate ourselves with God's grace and also a reminder uh, from the law okay uh, so I should put here motivate people to change by God's grace and with a reminder from God's law. There should be a reminder that when we disobey God, that there can be uh, bad consequences. Okay, the Bible does tell us that. But that should not be the main motivation. The bad consequences should not be the main motivation. Okay, now when we motivate people to pray, we can use different passages. So here I show different passages. Matthew 6, 8. Therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Now we just look at the text first. Now in the interpretation of the Bible passage, I want you all to look at the text carefully and find out what the Bible passage says. Do not be like the Gentiles who use repetitive words when they pray. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So this tells us a very important nature and ability of God that He knows the things we have need of before we ask. He already knows our need. He has this uh, power to know. He, uh, he knows our needs before we ask Him. When He sees our life, He knows what's happening in us. He knows what we need. Now, sometimes what we need might not uh, be what we think we need. Some people think they just need money. They just need a wife. They just need success. Some people think that that's what they need. But actually, they might need a good relationship with God. They might need um, the strength from God, the joy from the Lord, the wisdom from the God so that He can uh, the wisdom from God so that he can do everything well and then he'll be blessed in every area. So sometimes we don't know what we need. People think they just need money. Uh, there are many people who think that when they have money, then the problems will be solved. Money is only part of the problem. And then God has promised us when we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be given to us. So here this passage will say that God knows our needs. And it's implied in this verse that when God knows our needs, He will give according to our needs uh, out of His grace when we trust in Him and obey Him. When we seek first His kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to us. All the things He needs, that, uh, that He knows that we need, that He will give those things to us. So, okay, let's look at the points. First, God owns everything in the universe. So this is uh, the nature of God. Now the nature compared to grace is like this. Nature is his inequality, his ability. Okay, So his ability, he owns everything in the universe. Everything in the universe belongs to him. And God knows our needs. He knows what we need. He, uh, he knows everything. He cares about the sparrows. He will care about us much more. So he even care about a sparrow. So even a sparrow uh, that he will feed them. So he will care about us much more because we are precious to him. We are his children, those who trust in Jesus. 
we don't have to keep telling God about our needs. So this is what we do. We don't have to keep telling God, oh, I need this, I need that. When we love and obey God, He will give the best for us. So when we love and obey Him, He will give us the best. Uh, he will give us um, you know, the joy and the strength and the wisdom and the provision. And that so uh, when we love Him and obey Him, He knows our needs, He will respond to our needs. Okay, so this passage, and then Zephaniah 3.17, He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice you over you with singing. Here it says that God really enjoys his relationship with us, that he takes great delight in us. He, he is happy with us. That here it talks about Christians who have a relationship with God, people who have a relationship with God. He will take great delight in us. He will quiet you with his love. He will calm us down with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing, that he's so happy with us that he rejoices over us. So here it tells us about prayer. It tells us that God is very, very happy when we come to Him. He will rejoice over us with singing and He will calm us down with His love. When we have problems, He will calm us down. He will give us peace. He will give us comfort. So this verse assures us our prayer should be mainly building up the relationship with, with God and also trusting God wants to bless us. Trusting God uh, enjoys his relationship with us. He enjoys it very much, so much that he will rejoice over us with singing. So whenever we pray sincerely, we can say, God is very happy with me now. God wants to bless me now. God wants to pour his blessings upon me now. So let's look at the points. God is joyful and he is the source of joy. Now you might say, how can I get this points? Okay, now I, I want to say this. He rejoices over you with singing. That means he's rejoicing. So he's a joyful God. So that's where we, we get it. We get it from the verse. So he's a joyful God and he's a source of joy. All the joy in the world comes from him, even the non Christian's joy. The non Christian is, are happy about money, uh, their success. All this also came from God. The money, all the money in the world belongs to God. The ability for people, the ability of people to work hard and have success also came from God. That God gives people the ability that they can work and earn money. So all this came from God. So they are happy because of these gifts from God, but they don't accept God Himself as their Savior. So that is wrong with them. But what they receive uh, what they receive all came from God. Everything we have came from God. So, okay, so He's, he's the source of joy. When we build up a relationship with God, He will be very happy with us and will give us the best. So here it says that He's very happy with us. And then we can understand from the Bible because the Bible says that when we come close to Him, He'll come close to us. So if it says that He'll rejoice over us with singing, so when we come close to Him, he will rejoice over us with exceeding singing, with great singing, with, with joyful singing. That He will be more happy that we can you know, study the whole Bible and understand that. If this verse says that God can rejoice over us with singing, that means when we love Him, He will be, be rejoicing even uh, more greatly over us when we trust in Him and when we delight in Him that He will rejoice over us more. So when we build up a, a relationship with God, He will be very happy with us and will give us the best. Now give us the best is from the other Bible verses. That when we love Him, He will prepare for us that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of, that He will give us the best. And so this is from the other Bible passages that we put together. So he enjoys a relationship and when we have a close relationship with him, he will be very happy and bless us greatly. And three, God enjoys a relationship with us because he rejoices over us with singing. That means he enjoys us. 
And then when we have a close relationship with Him, He will enjoy that much more. So in our prayers, it's most important to trust in His love and to love Him. So it's most important to build up the love with God, that we love Him and we know that He loves us. So that is most important in our relationship with God. This verse will tell us the relationship with God is mainly to believe that He is rejoicing over us and then when we come close to Him, He'll rejoice over us more and He is very happy with us when we come close to Him. So we can derive from this passage the motivation to have a close relationship with God. And then, so this speaks against people because Jesus said don't be like the Gentiles who keep uh, use repetitive words to ask for what they want. So when we pray, some people think of prayer is always asking God, telling God, oh I need money, I need a wife, I need success, I need a job, I need this and that. It's always telling God what they need. That prayer is not about telling God's our needs because Jesus already said before you ask, God already knows our needs. So prayer is mostly building up the relationship with God and loving God and then seeking His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be given to us. So in my own prayer, I don't ask for much except for revival, except for that Christians will be loving God and serving God and people will be ready for the second coming of Jesus and ready for the great uh, tribulation because the tribulation, great tribulation can come any time and all Christians have to face that, that the great tribulations, uh, some people say that will be raptured before the great tribulation. This is not from the Bible. When you study the Bible, you find that it's not in the Bible. It's, it's some, from some people's wishful thinking. They wish, they hope, they find, they, you know, they, they don't look at the clear passage. They use other passages from implication saying, oh, uh, in the book of Revelation because it talks about the saints in heaven and then so they say okay the saints will be uh, raptured before that time but actually the book of Revelation repeats the second coming of Jesus seven times so it's not uh, sequential it doesn't follow the order and some people build up the theology on that instead of on the clear passages of second coming from Paul and from Jesus that they build on uh, the order in book of Revelation and it just doesn't really uh, support that. And so these people, this is wishful thinking and many people think they will be raptured. Actually, there are some Christians who say online, anytime we can be raptured now, anytime. They, they will be taken from the earth and then they'll disappear and then the rest of the world will go through the great tribulation and great suffering, but all this uh, good Christians will be raptured and then they will be taken away. They don't have to face the great tribulation. It is not in the Bible. I pray, Lord, please open the eyes. Please open the eyes to seek God's word, not to seek their own comforts, but to seek God's word, to study God's word. Now, you look for uh, rapture. Pastor Yip, you can see my explanation online, okay? And here another passage to motivate us to pray. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. So when you seek His kingdom, when we seek more people to be saved, to enter the kingdom of God and also let God be the king. There is His kingdom. Let God be the king in my heart, in my church, in my home, in my place of work. Then all these things will be added to us. So what does that mean? It means that God knows whether we love Him, whether we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness. God knows. God is not blind. And God knows who loves Him. When He knows certain people who, loves him, who love Him, God will bless these people. All these things will be given to them. So, so when we pray, instead of just asking for what our things, we pray for God's kingdom. So that's why we see in the Lord's Prayer, first is uh, our Father in heaven, holy, hallowed be your name, that people will honor your name, your kingdom come, that your kingdom will come to us, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's praying for God's name 
and God's kingdom and God's will first. And then the rest of the prayer is, is uh, praying for the needs and also about Satan is deliver us from evil. Deliver us. For, so it's praying to God. Instead of praying to Satan to drive away Satan, Jesus tells us to pray to God to lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. That, that we pray to God to deliver us from evil. But there are many people who use a kind of prayer is shouting at the devil. Devil come. De I mean, sorry. They will say, devil go away. Devil go away. Devil leave this place. Devil leave the church. Yeah. Um, it's not wrong to do that. But they put a lot of time in that. Instead of asking Jesus for protection. Asking Jesus to give us strength give us wisdom and give us faith in God that we overcome the, uh, the that we overcome the power of Satan okay so when we seek this kingdom and its righteousness and all these things will be given to us so we don't have to worry about anything so this is the promise of God he will give us everything we need God loves us and wants to give us the best first his nature he loves us and he wants to give us the best. This is quality, his quality. And to seek God's kingdom means we help more people to be born again. We want to we'll help more people to believe in Jesus. And let him rule over us. That we let Jesus, let God rule over us. Where God rules is his kingdom. To seek his righteousness means to obey him. So when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, He will give us all the things necessary to enter His will. That He will give us the provision, the wisdom, the strength, the joy, uh, the opportunity to enter God's will. And God's will is the best. I hope we all believe that. God's will is the best that can happen to us. If we enter God's will, our whole life will be blessed. So we seek God's will instead of seeking our own will. And many people have problems because they don't seek God's kingdom and righteousness. So this is warning that they don't, they have problems because they don't seek God's kingdom and righteousness. And therefore, those things are not added to them. Okay, and then motivate people to pray. Um, 1 Corinthians 2 9 I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him Let's see so here it says that when we love God he knows who loves God he know who loves God sincerely. Now some people just say with their mouth. They say, I love you, I love you. But then in the heart, they really love themselves and love the world. When God knows someone really loves him. Now what does loving God mean? It means that we want to have a close relationship with him. We appreciate everything he has done for us. We want to obey him. We want to spend time loving him. We want to tell people about Jesus. We want to glorify him. We want to follow His will, enter His plan. So that is loving God. And desiring Him and hungering for Him. Then all these things will be added to Him. So God treasures those who love Him. When we sincerely love God, He will prepare for us things we cannot imagine with His creativity. So His nature is His creativity. And He is generous. So he'll, He, he treasures those. He treasures those people. And then when we sincerely love Him, He will prepare for us the things we cannot imagine with His creativity. That we cannot imagine these things that He will prepare for us he, because it's, He has great creativity. He He's very creative. He can prepare things that we can never imagine. So when we look at the verse, we'll say, what nature does God have to have in order to fulfill this passage? Now, we as humans, we can compare. Can we humans say to someone, 
If you do this, then I can prepare for you things that you can never imagine. We cannot promise people that. First, we do not have the creativity. Second, we do not have the ability to give th those things to people. So, and all, also we don't have the resource to give the things that is beyond the imagination. Now, of course, uh, this verse means that it's something exceedingly good. That it's not, it's not something that uh, is uh, exceedingly bad. You know, exceedingly bad things also eyes may not have seen. But it's something exceedingly good that He will give to us. Okay, God is generous. So when we look at a verse, we'll say, okay, what qualities does God have to have? He is, he is creative, creative, he is generous, he is willing to give, he knows who loves him. Now why do we talk about God's nature and his grace? Because when we look at that, we'll, we'll like God, we'll say, God is good. <clears throat> and it's not hard to please God. <clears throat> God is good and gracious. He has good things prepared for us. So we say, He'll prepare for me things I never imagined. So if I follow Him, I don't have to worry about anything. So I hope we all believe that. When we follow God, we don't have to worry about anything. He will prepare for us things we never imagined. And He will plan for us things so we don't have to plan uh, a lot. Now we do plan. For instance, what I teach today, I have to plan. But it doesn't mean I have to plan my whole future. Because God will open the way for me that I can bring blessings to more people. God will prepare the way that I can train more people and raise up more people to serve God. That I don't have to plan because God will open the way for us. So what we do is we love God, trust in God, and we just do whatever we have in front of us and then we gradually will go higher and higher. So in our prayers, it's more important to love God than to ask for blessings. So it's more important to say, God, I love you with all my heart. So when we pray, Oh Lord, I love you. I desire you. I appreciate you. I enjoy you. You're so wonderful. So I hope you learn to pray like this. And also in your praise and worship, don't just sing, but you say, Oh God, it's so wonderful. I sing love to you. I love you. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, Praises to your name, O oh, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. So when we think of God, when we worship God, we say, God, you're so wonderful. And we keep telling people, God is right here. This is from the Bible. When we come close to Him, He'll come close to us. When we dwell in Jesus, He will dwell in us. So when we come close to Him, praise Him, He will be with us. He will stay with us. So we say, God, I stay with you. I come to you and you for sure come to me and you for sure bless me and give me strength. So when we come to God, when we worship God, we can enjoy Him. Lord Jesus, you are so happy with me. You bless me. You give me strength, you give me health, you give me what I need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. So this gives us motivation to spend more time loving Him in our prayers. Okay. So we, you look at each passage and think about what qualities God has to have in order to do those, fulfill those, prof, uh, those verses to us. John 6, 44, No one can come to me, Jesus, unless the Father who sent me draws him. So no one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws him to follow Jesus. So it's the Father who draws us. So what does it tell us about God's nature? God's nature is that He desires. He desires us. He wants us to come to Him. He enjoys us. He treasures us. And He would send the Holy Spirit to draw us to Him. He, was, he is active. 
He sends the Holy Spirit to draw us to follow Him, to come to Him. So it is God who draws us to Him. It's not us who come to Him first. It's, it's Him who comes to us first to draw us to Him. So this tells us about God's nature. He, he desires us. He, he loves us. He wants to be with us. And He, he will draw us to Him. Okay? So... Um, so that means when we respond to Him, God is very happy. When we respond to Him and say, God, I want to be with you, I like you, I hunger for you, God is very happy. So I hope that we all, when we come to God, will say, God, I hunger for you, I want you, I hunger for you more than I hunger for food, I want you, I want you more than I want money. Lord, I want you more than anything. I delight in you more than anything else. I delight in you more than any other person in the world because you are so full of love, so full of mercy and kindness. So God wants us to come close to Him. That is His nature. He, he is not hard to reach. He wants to come to us. So there are some people who say, Oh, I feel God is so far away from me. Now that is from a wrong um, theology. Some people think that they have to feel God in order that God is close to us. That's not true. When we come to Him, He already has come to us. No matter how we feel. Now, of course, if we can feel His presence, that's best. If we pay attention, if we put down our burdens, we can feel peace and joy and love and power when we trust God more and love God more. But not everyone can feel that to the same extent. And also some people in a time of weakness, they may not feel that. Now for me, I thank God. Since I experience the Holy Spirit, anytime I pray, I can experience His peace and joy. Every time I pray, hallelujah, His joy will flow through me. That is a good thing. And I, I count that blessing. I thank God for the blessing. I remember that blessing. I appreciate that blessing. So all the time I say, God is with me. God is with me. But for some people that they don't experience this, don't worry. Just relax and come to God with a peaceful heart. And we, we may start to experience peace. Actually, most people would experience peace when they come to God. They will find that they start to forget about the burdens. They start to have more peace in their hearts. So don't ever say that God is far away. God is far away from me. Whenever we come to Him, He is always close to us. And it's God who takes the initiative to attract us to Him. So we don't have to worry about uh, that God does not accept us. We don't have to worry that God does not accept us. We don't have to worry that God doesn't listen to my prayer. He will always listen to my prayer and hear my prayer and respond to my prayer. He will always. But he might not respond to the prayer according to uh, what we what we want, because it might not be what we want, uh, what we need. Some people think that all they need is money or a boyfriend or girlfriend. But actually, when we love God, then uh, actually what we might need most is most is that we love God and have a close relationship with Him, and. A close relationship with God is not hard because God wants to have the relationship. It's Him who attracts us to Him. So whenever we have the motivation to come to Him, that means it comes from God. So whenever in our heart we are drawn to Him, it, it is God drawing us to Him. So we can always say, I want to come to God because God is moving my heart to come, to come close to Him. Even when we sin or are lazy to pray, He still tries to attracts us back to Him. Now even when we are lazy, of course we should not be lazy, but even when we are lazy, God does not give up on us. He will continue to move us to come closer to Him. So we can be confident that it's not hard to come close to God and it's not hard for God to bless us. So it's not hard to come close to God and it's not hard for God to come close to us and bless us. But many people think that it's hard because they don't study the scripture. They don't believe the scripture. They don't believe that God says that He draw us to Him. It's God who draw us to Him so we have, can have confidence. He wants us to come to Him. He wants us to 
enjoy Him and love Him and delight in Him and when we delight in Him, He is very happy. Now, let me say something about assignment. When you do the assignment, that's what I want you to say as I just said. Let me, let me demonstrate again. Okay, If you use this passage, what do I want you to say about God's grace and motivation? When, when we read this passage, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. I want you to say something like, God has a heart for us. God is waiting for us. And He sends the Holy Spirit to move in our heart. And He sends preachers to go out, Christians to go out, to evangelize to us. He's, and then when we hear the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will move in our heart to draw us to believe in Jesus. So God takes the init initiative. And that means that when we love Him and respond to Him, He is very, very happy. He will for sure respond. He will never stay away from us. He will always come to us and He will always bless us according to His will. He will start to bless us and bring in more and more blessings. So if we spend time loving Him all the time, we'll experience more and more blessings from Him. So we have this confidence. For sure, God wants to come to us. For sure, God wants to bless me. For sure, He'll respond to my needs. He'll respond to my prayer. He'll respond to my love for Him. He'll respond to me personally. He'll come close to me. He'll enjoy me. He will delight in me and He'll bless me. So I hope that we uh, all will say that, Yes, Lord, He attracts me. That means He really wants me. And then James 4 a Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. So when we uh, talk about this, uh, this Bible verse, I now demonstrate to you here. It says, first, what it says is that when we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. So when we come close to God, He will come close to us. For sure, He is very happy. His nature is, He likes to be with us. He likes to be with us. He treasures us. He sees that we are important. So, Whenever we come to Him, He is very happy. For sure, He will come to us. For sure, He will work in us. And also, from the Bible verse we just read in John 6, 44, it's Him, the Father who, draw, who uh, draws us. So, it's Him who draw, draw us first. And then when we come to Him, He will for sure come to bless us. And then when He comes to us, from other Bible verses, we know that then we'll bear much fruit in John 15 verse 5. Then when He comes to us, he, He'll cause us to bear much fruit and He'll give us peace and joy and love. Because the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord. So in the presence of God, we'll rejoice and we'll have strength and wisdom and have all the blessings from God when we have a close relationship with God. And He will change our nature so that we'll treasure the godly things. So we'll treasure God more. So this is what I want you to do in your assignment. To describe it in personal way, in a personal way. Now, also another way is to contrast to human responses. Sometimes some people, we want to get close, get close to them, but they don't like us. They say, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not rich enough, that they don't like us. And that is very hard to have a good relationship with the person. But God is not like that. God is almighty. He has all the power. He is full of love. He is full of mercy. He has all the resources. And yet He is so humble that He will never despise any of us coming to Him. He's always, always very, very humble. He will always come to us. So we have the confidence that when we come to Him, He'll always come to us and He'll bring with Him all the blessings and our life will be transformed the more we come to Him. And so when we pray, other than first we have a time that we concentrate in God and praise God and love God. Father, we love You, we worship You, we adore You. So we have this time. But also when we are doing other things, when we are walking, when we are taking a shower, when we are cooking, when we are washing dishes, whatever we are doing, 
we can be praising God and loving God. When we're walking on the road, we say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're so good. Hallelujah. So first, God treasures our relationship with Him. He treasures us. He treasures our relationship with Him. And John 6, 44 tells us that God tries to attract us to Him. When we respond and come close to Him, He will come close to us. It's God who attracts us first. And then when we come to Him, He is very happy and He will come close to us. From Zephaniah 370, we know that He is very happy and He rejoices over us with singing. Where God is, He will bring blessings and raise us up to a high level. So whenever He comes, He will give us blessings and fruit and strength and spiritual gifts and opportunities so that we can go to a higher level of His plan. And when we think of praying, we should think of building up a loving relationship with God. This will and this will help us to enter God's plan. So when we think of praying, don't just think of asking, asking. Some people just keep asking for money, keep asking for a wife, keep asking for children. We don't need to ask for this. God will prepare for us. And even when we have sickness, we can just we can ask God for health. But we don't have to keep saying. We just say, Lord, please give me health. And you can do it. And then we can praise God, love God. God, you're so wonderful. You're full of mercy and kindness. You're full of goodness. God, you're so good. I love you. I adore you. I worship you. I need you. I hold on to you. And then whenever I hold on to you, I'm very happy and for sure you bless me. You'll be with me all the time. Thank you, Jesus. You're with me all the time. I want to trust in you. You always bless, bless me. You always stay with me and always bless me so I can come to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So it's more building up the relationship with God. 